What's up everyone? This is the Montre Black. Today we're gonna react to a death battle. Madara versus Aizen. Let's watch. So the death battle is sponsored by Raycon. Raycons give you absolutely amazing audio quality no matter where you go or what you do. Whether you're getting pumped up, winding down, working, or working out. And they're a perfect gift for anyone on your list. And as your gift to yourself, they started half the price of other premium audio brands. Plus, they're available in five stylish colors. And with free shipping and returns, gifting is easier than ever this year with Raycons. There's nothing more soothing than listening to my favorite tunes on some Raycons when I'm out squirrel hunting with my dune buggy. What is wrong with you? Click the link in the description box or go to buyraycon.com slash deathbattle and use code HOLIDAY to get 15% off site-wide. Madara Uchiha, the legendary messianic shinobi from Naruto. Sosuke Aizen, the soul reaper who stood upon the heavens from Bleach. We may dream of glory, but these two have the will to power to take it by force and claim a seat among the gods. They're the biggest, fattest anime bosses around, and not even death can stop them. Ghost versus zombie, let's go! He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. Endless destruction, countless dead. A plot to conquer the planet. The ninja world was at war. For the fourth time, only one man could save humanity from itself, from beyond the grave. The same man who orchestrated this war in the first place in order to end all wars forever. Madara Uchiha. From birth, war was the only thing the young Madara knew, and there was no ninja he liked fight more than Hashirama Senju. They're basically ninja Romeo and Juliet. Belonging to opposing clans, Madara and Hashirama were forced to battle each other for years, all the while dreaming of a better future. Their romance eventually overcame their clan's differences, and the two groups merged, creating the village of Konoha. But Madara wasn't satisfied with Hashirama's dream of peace through cooperation. He desired an immortal peace through total domination. Everyone else thought that was crazy, so he bounced, and then he came back to wage war against the village he helped build. Well, that didn't last long, huh? Madara's megalomania was perhaps fated, considering he is, in fact, the reincarnation of the demigod Indra Otsutsuki and the inheritor of his immensely powerful chakra. Basically physical and spiritual energy that makes ninja magic. Madara specializes in fire and wood style jutsus, which just seems irresponsible to put those together. Like a gender reveal party waiting to happen. His wood is especially impressive, considering it's the only style of elemental jutsu that can create light. Why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> Madara can even use his goonbai to absorb ninjutsu and return it right back to sender. You know you're a badass when you can take on armies with just a friggin' fan. Madara has torn apart hordes of ninja without breaking a sweat, taken a beating from every tailed beast at once, and even defeated the five kage, some of the strongest shinobi in the world. The Raikage is even stated to be fast enough to move at light speed, and even weaker ninja like Orochimaru have dodged literal photon beams. But Madara's greatest tool is the one born from his very bloodline, the Eternal Mangekyo Sharingan. These magical eyes massively enhance his perception down to the cellular level, allowing him to predict movements, see the flow of chakra, and summon the mighty perfect Susano. The Sharingan can also cast a Genjutsu that'll trap anyone that looks at it in an illusion, and even break them out of those same illusions. In Sasuke's case, even ones as strong as Itachi Tsukuyomi, which can warp your perception of time. Itachi used it on a fellow Uchiha and made her live out her entire life in the span of one one hundredth of one one thousandth of one one millionth of a second. And when she died in the illusion, she died for real. If Sasuke could break out of it, Madara could too, easily. And after grafting some of Hashirama's cells onto himself, he not- would always have a piece of his Romeo inside him. <laughs> this is my ship, Wiz. Stop looking at me like that. He not only gained a healing factor strong enough to regenerate from having half his body vaporized, but also the terrifying Rinnegan. A.K.A. the big chungus of all eye magic. The ringy eyes let Madara absorb chakra and ninjutsu, create invisible limbo clones, see and remove your soul from your body, and summon giant-ass meteors, as if he needed any more fucking powers. While the Rinnegan lacks some of the Sharingan's unique abilities, he can switch between them at will. 
After tearing the ninja world a new asshole, Madara was finally defeated in a climactic battle for the ages by his BFF. And thus, the life of a legendary shinobi came to an end in the arms of his one true love. Or did it? Alright, this, this is gonna get pretty crazy, but just bear with me. Fearing a defeat in battle, Madara set a time delay jutsu that would posthumously rewrite reality and bring him back to life. And it worked! So Madara tricked another Uchiha, Obito, into witnessing his best friend murdering his other best friend. Then he tasked Obito with manipulating the world into another war. Meanwhile, he gave his own Renegon to Nagato with the goal of getting it back after he was brought back to life the second time with the Outer Path because he died again. Make sense? Ah, that'll never work. <laughs> You're right, it didn't! So Obito went out and got the Renegon back from Nagato's corpse, because he died. Then Kabuto brought Madara back to life, and he got his eyes back from Obito after some backstabbing. Then he sealed the awakened Tentails within himself in order to gain ultimate power and create the world's greatest nap time ever! <gasps> Look what you people have done to him. You'd think Tentails' power would be awesome, but those dinky eight balls of doom are so lame! Don't let their size fool you, these truth-seeking orbs are in another league. The Ten Tails is strong enough to wipe continents off the map, and the orbs can be shaped into weapons that will completely disintegrate anything they come into contact with. Not even ninja resurrected through Edo Tensei like Minato could regenerate limbs lost to the truth-seeking orbs, which means they had to erase his literal spirit itself. Madara's power was so insane he was considered comparable to the original Sage of Six Pants, the dude who helped create the friggin' moon. And when Madara created meteors, they were large enough to show up against the curvature of the Earth. Measuring their size and estimating the height at which Madara lifted them, they'd have to possess a potential energy of at least 372 petatons of TNT. He was even fast enough to keep up with Eight Gates Guy, who kicked hard enough to bend space! Madara even has an attack where he hawks light speed loogies! Considering even base Madara has displayed speeds on par with light timing ninja, we know Ten Tails Madara would have to be significantly faster thanks to the Ten Tails of power. With virtually no one left to oppose him, Madara's plot was finally in the endgame. He awakened the Rin Sharingan, and with the God Tree summoned, he cast the infinite Tsukuyomi, spreading the tree's roots across the entire planet and capturing every single person in the world. This would enslave all of humanity in an endless dream world, free of conflict forever. Peace! Through total domination. Manipulating this tree with his chakra would have involved physically spreading its roots through and around the entire earth in mere moments. Estimating the tree's mass and the speed at which the roots were moved, his chakra must have released an energy exceeding one yoda ton of TNT. And this was with just one jutsu! Is there a character that could possibly even touch Madara Uchiha? Kishimoto himself didn't even know. Madara's power was so overwhelming, the only thing that could take him down was treachery. Even the man with the magic eyes couldn't see that coming. All that was left was his old friend, Hashirama, there to comfort him in his final moments. Just like Romeo and Juliet, for never was there a story of more woe than this of Hashirama and his mother bro. I read it in iambic pentameter. There a gas leak in here? Now the real fun. The Soul Society was in chaos. One of its leading Shinigami was set to be executed under suspicious circumstances. A band of humans from the living world had invaded to save her, and Sosuke Aizen, captain of the 5th Division of the Gotei 13, was dead. Murdered. What dastardly mastermind could have been behind all this? He'd have to be a galaxy-brained 5D chess master. The man responsible was, in fact, Sosuke Aizen. Little is known about the man's past, only that he isn't a man, a human man, but a soul reaper. These Shinigami are spiritual beings who ferry lost souls to the afterlife and purify those who have turned evil in the living world. They're badass anime wizard grim reaper swordsmen. Though Aizen himself was hardly that cool. I mean, just look at those glasses. Dork. But this Clark Kent was harboring a secret. Aizen had spent years attempting to develop the means to ultimate power, ruining the lives of many of his colleagues via his twisted experiments. Oh, so when Aizen does it, he's a super villain, but when you do it to me, it's shut the hell up, Boomstick, you're under NDA and I know about the stuff you As a Shinigami, Aizen's body is made of reishi, being spirit matter. 
and empowered by rare yoku, being spirit energy. Entities made of reishi are completely invisible to anyone without specific supernatural awareness, though a Shinigami body is still tangible and can be damaged normally. And with his Rei Ryoku energy, Aizen can create incredibly powerful plants. He is so strong, weaker beings will literally disintegrate if they get too close to him. This is due to his Rayatsu, a localized spiritual pressure exerted as a result of his enormous power. He also knows tons of Kino, or spells. He can create force fields, bend the light around him to make him impossible to detect, fire concentrated bolts of lightning, and absorb the energy from his surroundings to make giant-ass energy dragons. Perhaps his deadliest Kido is Kurohitsugi. After an extensive incantation, Aizen surrounds his target in an enormous black coffin that distorts space and time and tears its victims apart. Aizen's plotting finally came to fruition during the invasion of the Soul Society, where he faked his death using his greatest weapon, his Zanpakuto, Kyoka Swingetsu. The Shinigami Zanpakuto is a magical sword that possesses a sentient spirit. Kyoka Swingetsu gives Aizen complete control over his victim's senses the instant they lay eyes on the sword. This complete hypnosis traps its victims in a nearly perfect illusion that Aizen can manipulate at will making himself virtually immune to attacks while his opponents are sitting ducks. It's so strong that it kept a group of ex-soul reapers known as the Visor trapped for over a hundred years without them even knowing it. It's one of the most broken powers ever and the definition of anime bullshit. But it was all worth it when he perfected his ultimate creation, the Hogyoku, an immensely powerful reality-warping device that, quote, materializes the user's wishes. In Aizen's case, it realized his desire to become the strongest being in the universe. With it, he can heal any of his wounds, even when half his body is vaporized. And more importantly, it exponentially increases his power over time through evolution by turning him into a horrifying butterfly monster man. A being eventually strong enough to dethrone and replace the Soul King, the deity that controls the cosmic balance. Even a minor disruption of the Soul King's influence led to the three worlds of Earth, the Soul Society, and Waco Mundo to start physically collapsing. That it implied that the Soul King has to be outputting enough energy to hold all these places together at all times. Considering each should be roughly the same size, this would require an energy of over 140 zettatons of TNT. As it is powerful enough to vaporize mountains as a side effect of a sword swing. His casual energy blasts can disintegrate huge chunks of the earth, and he can take on armies with just his Ryatsu alone. He even defeated the rest of the Gote 13 without so much as breaking a sweat. So he should be way stronger than Soul Society heavy hitters like Kenpachi, who sliced this 120 kilometer wide asteroid to pieces. That's roughly the width of Great Britain. An asteroid of this size would have to carry a kinetic energy of at least 44 petatons of TNT. And Aizen was so badass, he literally transcended other Shinigami in power. He was in a whole other dimension from the rest of them. Until he fought Ichigo Kurosaki. The battle we've all been waiting for. Way before this in the Soul Society arc, Ichigo was already as fast as lightning. And by this point, after all his power boosts, he'd even be faster than light. Hell, even weaker characters like this lady can dodge lightning. Though their fight was epic, Ichigo had transcended the Shinigami as well. And even Aizen himself. Feeding upon his insecurities, the Hogoku abandoned Aizen, who was quickly defeated and imprisoned within the bottommost level of the Soul Society's prison. Aizen was left alone. His great power he sacrificed so much to achieve was gone forever. Or was it? Somehow he ended up getting even stronger than before. What made him so strong? Could it be the chair? It's not the chair. It could theoretically be due to the chair's restraints keeping his Ryatsu from properly releasing, building it up within him until he was stronger in base than he was at his previous max. Nah, it's definitely the chair. And, ooh, since the chair could still hold him after he got stronger, wouldn't that make it even stronger than him? Even stronger than the Soul King? All hail the mighty Chair-sama, most powerful being in all of Bleach. He even managed to hold his own against the Quincy Warlord, Yua, who absorbed the power of the Soul King himself. He even used Kyoka Suigetsu to trick him, and Yuha's a dude who can literally see every possible future all at the same time. All according to Keikaku, bitches! And after standing among the gods themselves, Aizen returned to captivity and pondered the meaning of his existence. 
Even trapped in a prison, sealed off in a different dimension with a 20,000 year sentence, he remains the most dangerous being in the world. Who knows what schemes are brewing behind those cold, calculating eyes. No compassion, no empathy, only the drive for power. No one has ever stood at the top. Neither you nor me. From now on, I alone will stand at the top. All right, the commands are set from the data to all possibilities. But first, if you want the confidence of an anime supervillain, check out Blue Chew. This episode is brought to you by Blue Chew. The secret to, well, pretty much anything is confidence. And that's why Blue Chew delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis in chewable tablet form right to your door. Yep, and did we mention you get Blue Chew's tablets at a fraction of the cost of those other guys? Getting ready to go is simple. Just sign up at BlueChew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. Plus, it's all done online, which means no more awkward conversations with your doctor or waiting in line at the pharmacy. And you can take Blue Chew anytime, day or night, so you can plan ahead or be ready whenever. So if you could benefit from extra confidence when it's time to perform, Blue Chew can help. And we've got a special deal for you. Try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code BATTLE at checkout. Pay five dollar shipping. That's bluechew.com promo code battle to receive your first month free. Visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information. Thanks, Blue Chew, for sponsoring the show. But right now, it's time for a death battle! Uh-huh. You can see me. I can see everything. <laughs> Did you see that? Nothing escapes my illusions here. No, 
Mike Madera won. He fake died twice for his 5D chess plan, while Eisen only fake died once. Eisen and Madera were extremely evenly matched in raw power and speed. By our calculations, Madara spreading the God Tree's roots with his chakra was about seven times more powerful than the best that Aizen could scale to with his rare yoke, and both ended up being roughly as fast as each other. While there are a range of possible feats and numbers to go with to determine their limits, the point is, they're always going to be close to even. Which means the main thing that mattered here were their powers and how they countered each other. Madara's enormous variety of abilities eventually overwhelmed Aizen. While Soul Reapers like Aizen may be invisible to regular people, the Rinnegan allowed Madara to see invisible spiritual beings like his own Limbo clone. Now, the Rinnegan lets you see and remove human souls, and that's exactly what a Soul Reaper is. Both Chakra and Rare Yoku utilized spirit energy and operated in similar ways, being formed into attacks like Ninjutsu and Kido. That meant that Madara's ability to absorb Ninjutsu allowed him to nullify the vast majority of Aizen's range attacks, and even dispel his force field. And despite how OP Aizen's complete hypnosis was, churned down users can break out of illusions no sweat, even ones as powerful as Itachi Sukuyomi. And since Madara can switch between the Rinnegan and the Sharingan at will, he'd be able to break out of an illusion anytime he wanted. Aizen's illusions are nearly perfect, but fellow Captain Unahata was able to subconsciously notice its flaws. With an eye as perceptive as the Sharingan, which can spot imperfections in Genjutsu all the time, it was only inevitable that Madara would be able to quickly break out. However, the same couldn't be said for Aizen, who never showed any resistance to the kind of mental illusions Madara can create. Even setting illusions aside, the sheer quantity of offensive options at Madara's disposal, whether it be his clones, meteors, or monsters summoned by the Rinnegan, kept Aizen constantly on the back foot. But none of that mattered if they couldn't kill each other, and both had pretty insane healing factors that could recover from just about anything, except for those pesky eight balls of doom. Madara's truth-seeking orbs were capable of completely, molecularly annihilating spiritual beings and preventing them from regenerating. And, again, Aizen was a spiritual being. Since Aizen lacked the ability to do the same irreversible damage to Madara, the ghost of the Uchiha had exactly what he needed to put this actual ghost down for good. Aizen was an unbelievably overpowered foe, but Madara's own powers, illusions, and devastating truth-seeking orbs allowed him to crush the ex Shinigami. Sosuke should have kept his eyes on the prize. And do you feel any shame at all? Eh, moderately. Ha! Double pun. Suck it, please. The winner is Madara Uchiha. If you like the death battle, give a thumbs up. I will see you on my next reaction. This is the Montre Black. Peace.